ever-flowing liquid fire of life, ever-expanding and illuminating truth, which is always revealed with wisdom, a spiritual nutrient necessary for vitality that is maintained through selflessness, a filter of ether that aids purity, which is love. Love, a limitless paper lantern floating into infinity on the intentions and actions of initiates of the mysteries. Welcome fellow phoenixes, I'm Ross Cessna, and together we are the Spiritual Phoenix. The intent of this show isn't to tell you what to think, but to get you to think, and originally articulate yourself in a way that is uplifting. We are the artists of our lives, and today is a blank canvas. Let's collectively create a better tomorrow. And now I'd like to take a moment and uh, focus on what we're grateful for today. Today, I'm grateful to um, have the understanding, the insight, and the uh, have been given the capacity to make um, internal changes in my life and then see the external rewards from those internal changes that I've made um, previously in my life. I would try to make external changes to have internal changes. Um, internal changes are a little bit more permanent than the external ones and if I have to change everything externally to be internally peaceful that's a very big um, undergoing <laughs> to really take on and um, initially changing things internally is a substantial amount of effort but with practice and with persistence um, you can really reap the rewards of that. Now I'd like to read um, a review that I have. And this one is from April Ann M. I really appreciate how open and honest you are about your past and how you have grown. In my opinion, people going through similar events will relate to someone who really puts it all out there. I love listening from the beginning and hearing as you become more comfortable with yourself and with what you feel. I have never struggled with addiction and recovery, but someone very close to me does. Your honesty allows me to see things a little through his eyes, so much so that I felt compelled to send him a message today to let him know how proud of him I was for his nine months of being in recovery. Thank you again. Please continue to deliver your message. April, we've um, chatted a bit, um, and you're sharing your story as well and I find that very powerful. I appreciate the recognition and um, the compliments, certainly. Also, um, that's a very big accomplishment for the uh, person that you message who just celebrated nine months in recovery. Um, personally, I know how difficult that can be. I'm coming up on eight months in um, two days and it's not necessarily easy and the substances that I've used are different than a lot of other people in recovery not that the disease is, is different but those chemical hooks and the compulsion for it um, is a little bit different I would say the end results still the same so I, I give a lot more credit to other people for their own tenacity through things um, regardless of substances but certain people on different substances have a lot more tenacity than I do, I would say, um, in certain capacities. I don't mean to, to minimize myself, but to uh, take my hats off to other people for their own struggles. We all have different things that we struggle with. Um, and now I'd like to get into a couple quotes for today's episode. By deliberately changing the internal image of reality, people can change the world. And that was said by Willis Harmon. External circumstances will not change until internal belief systems change. And that was said by Miles Monroe. Now, oftentimes, as I've stated previously um, at the beginning of this episode, I would try to create external changes to bring about internal changes. Some examples of that would be um, 
a significant other maybe needed some more space or something at that time. The internal change in me because I, I hadn't really developed a lot of self-esteem would be, oh, they don't like me. They are separating from me. So the external change that I would do would go a couple of different directions. One of the external changes would be to um, reach out in a needy way. Oh, I need you. I am so down. Reach out in an angry way. Oh, I'm so pissed off. Why are you doing this? Um, reach out and like a, no, actually not reach out at all. Kind of disconnect. Um, seek other other things and kind of just leave them to the side in an unhealthy way. I'm not in a romantic relationship now. Um, it doesn't mean I still don't have feelings for someone. I do, but it's not something I'm, I'm willing to pursue yet, and they're not willing to pursue it either. But it doesn't mean that those old romantic habits that I've had don't rear their heads sometimes. And what I do now is just kind of um, take a step back, appreciate where they're at with everything, evaluate my own needs, um, and, and realize, you know, it's okay for them to do their own thing, and it's actually better for both of us if I don't say anything, and if I make peace with it in my own mind, whoever is supposed to be there um, will be there. And before I would kind of need people to um, validate my own validity, in a sense. like, And I would want to importunate myself to where people, quote unquote, needed me. Um, I don't necessarily want to be needed now. I want to be appreciated. Um, but just because somebody needs some space and doesn't contact me um, every day or doesn't have this like obsessive compulsive amount of contact, it doesn't mean that I'm not important to that person. And it, it also doesn't mean that I'll ever be in a relationship or I will be. Um, it, it doesn't mean anything. <laughs> like, it just means now that's what they're doing. I've been okay being um, alone and I've I can't really say I've been okay being in relationships. I've been okay being in relationships when things are good. Um, but I have to be okay with caring about somebody and not having things go my way. Other um, external changes that I've tried to make for internal things is somebody's upset me um, in, in some way. So then my reaction is to try to correct them, inform them, um, usually through anger or acting out in improper ways um, and all that does is perpetuate that own misery for, for myself acting out on anger has its own penalty in it I'm a firm believer that every action um, has a, a penalty or reward built into it and if you react negatively you might get a momentary reward but you'll be penalized with negative ones later on. In my personal experience, maybe that's not the same for everybody. Um, and there's been times too where when I'm making the right decision and maybe not necessarily um, reacting or acting out at all, just kind of processing things, initially there, there may be like this, what I perceive as a penalty, but once I process that enough, then it becomes a reward um, in a sense because now I've kind of learned that lesson and I've reaped the benefit from um, handling that situation appropriately. One of the external ways that I've, I've tried to change internal things previously um, was actually through my use of substances. So it's fitting that I read April's review. I didn't even really think of, about the correlation of that until now, um, but I would like when I smoked pot or whatever. Um, and again, I'm not vilifying pot. For me personally, it doesn't work anymore. But when I smoked, it would be to either um, feel better about something. Oh, I'm so down, I'll smoke and I'll feel happy. Um, it would be to make me less angry. I'm so pissed, I'll smoke and then I'll, I'll be okay with it. Um, you know what I mean? Whatever it was, pot was my panacea in many ways. The thing about that is, though, it, it just kind of masked the symptoms. It didn't take it away. When the pot wore off, I was still angry. When the pot wore off, I was still miserable. Um, and eventually, over time, what had happened is I needed pot to do everything. Oh, I'm going to go to the gas station right down the road. Better smoke a bowl first. Um, 
gonna go smoke a bowl, better smoke a bowl first. Like, I'm sure that I've seriously done the, the, the latter one that I've said. It. I mean, it became a focal point in my life and it was um, elevated above everything else. And granted, not everybody gets there. I, I totally understand that. And if you can use it in a responsible way where it doesn't affect you, that's fine. I can't. For me, it was the solution for everything. So I thought, and that solution actually became a problem. Um, so that's a good example of external changes for internal things. Now, as far as internal changes, when I change, um, I believe it was Wayne Dyer that said, when you change the way you look at things, the things you look at change. Now, I, I had tried to change physical locations, all this stuff. When I was, I went away from this area for 10 years. I've said it in other episodes, I'm fairly sure. And then when I came back, um, I realized that I always had the solution inside of me um, for what I was searching for. I, it's kind of like this in, in many ways. In this moment, do I have all my needs met? And the answer, if I'm being truthful, everything that I need, not stuff that I want. Yes, I do. I, I have an abundance of, I, I, I'm living in abundance right now. Clothes on my back, uh, food in my belly, shelter overhead. I took a, a shower earlier. Um, just these things that we've come to take for granted. Now, I had all those things before, but I wanted more. So no matter what it was, it was always a, a sense of more. Just like I, I've had happiness before, but like I perceived that I wanted to be happier. Like there's this it's I think that I've illustrated that point when you feel that you don't have what you need these wants are never ending I used to um, try to buy things to, to satisfy me sometimes I still fall in that trap I'm not perfect by any means I regress sometimes but there's progress in regression sometimes also sometimes through regression I realize that I didn't slide back as far as I used to, or I, I've made a new mistake that I haven't made. And it's like, holy, holy geez, I've never made this mistake before now. I don't know how to do it. I might have to make this mistake a couple more times. Um, but no matter what the external solution is, I, I mean, there should be some kind of internal resolution for it. Granted, some of I haven't experienced everything, so I, I can't say that as a blanket thing. Um, and I, it might not work for some people because they might not have built the foundation to make those internal transitions for external things, um, especially if it's some major external event that may be extremely difficult. Um, I've been fortunate in some ways to have external events that were very difficult for me that have helped me navigate certain things by no means would I ever um, specifically ask for uh, negative situations for myself or anybody if I'm in good conscience um, but I feel that I am somewhat equipped to deal with it better than I was and, and part of that is through a surrender to my my higher power um, not higher power in a personified sense, just some kind of uh, conscious whatever. Like, I can't explain it. If, if you're on the same wavelength, you'll get what I mean, and if not, you won't, and that's cool. Um, to me, there's some kind of plan, and I, I'm not capable of understanding everything. So if I just try to realize that I'm perceiving everything from my limited perspective, and I might not be looking at the totality of how this piece of whatever that's upsetting me plays into the um, larger fabric of uh, everything and eternity and <laughs> infinity, then um, I'm better equipped to make the internal changes. Sometimes the best 
thing that I can know is that I don't know what it is and that sometimes, I mean, I don't want to say things just happen. I feel that things happen for a reason, but sometimes the reason that things happen um, might take some time. So taking peace that I've been given what I needed to receive at that time or been given something that I'm capable of handling even though I may not want to at this current time um, is, is very liberating for me. I really feel that I've illustrated uh, all the points that I wanted to make on this. You can uh, follow me on social media at Spiritual Phoenix. If you look at the banner below it'll have uh, the spelling of that because it's a little bit different. You can visit my website thespiritualphoenix.com I'm going to be changing it up a little bit to make it uh, more easily, um, more e easier to navigate, I guess is a, a better way to say it. Um, and with that, I love, respect, and appreciate all of you. Uh, also, if you could please leave a review on iTunes and share these videos and uh, like them and comment on them and just that kind of stuff. If it vibes with you, if it doesn't, like... I'm not just going to tell you blanketly to do something. I don't think that's the, the best approach. It's not really, it doesn't vibe with me. And with that, love and light, namaste. I'm going to put this episode on the pyre. Don't believe. Don't follow. Do not consume. Do not watch. Largely what I'm talking about here is reclaiming experience. This is what's been taken from us. It's a self-advancing, self-expanding, self-defining process, and it takes no prison. The real world isn't a spiritual world, it isn't a material world, it isn't an empty world, it isn't a solid world, it's simply...